Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. So more cards have been revealed and there's some patch notes. So I'm going to catch up and give my first impressions on everything that I missed so far all the way up until Aurelia, which I'm super excited about. Before I get into the reveals, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. I make deck profiles, beginner friendly videos, gameplay highlights, and other lore related stuff. The road to 5k is going strong and I need all the help I can get, so it'd be awesome if you joined. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay. With that, let's get into the reveals. Alright, so starting off, we have Guardians of the Ancient stuff. Now, this was released a couple days ago, but I'm doing this all in one bundle video. So, we're going to start with 2 mana 2 3 Solari Sunhawk. Daybreak. Stun the strongest enemy. Okay, so another Daybreak card. This is another uh, 2 drop Daybreak card that we have. So, I guess Leona Curve is looking a little bit nicer. Uh, premium stat line can be played on offense and defense effectively, can be played on turn 3, turn 4. Um, pretty efficiently as well in order to stun things so basically like in any situation where a stun spider can be relevant so can Solari Sunhawk so that's really really cool uh, blinding crest is its skill so we got that eye of the raw rock oh I know some cards that reference the raw rock so that's kind of fun to see it is a five mana landmark countdown one stun the two weakest enemies so more stun synergy daybreak and also more daybreak synergy so maybe Leona Yas coming back with a vengeance actually going to be uh decent we'll see uh summon a copy of me with countdown two Ooh, countdown one stun the daybreak summon a copy wow that's so cool so you have two stuns back to back um one's going to be countdown one one's countdown two and that is 10 mana by itself so that's pretty relevant for malphite level um other than that yeah it's just going to be uh, multiple stuns, which is very, very strong. This by itself is stun four for Yasuo. So, if Yasuo isn't going to be relevant uh, after this expansion, uh, he's never going to be. That's what I'm gonna say. Uh, Shadows of the Past, five mana fast spell. Recall each ally and summon a living shadow in its place. So, really big Zed synergy. Um, I. I could say I'm very surprised. I've n I would never have expected to see a card that does this. Recall each ally, summon a living shadow in its place. So this is better if you have a lot of recall synergy. Um, a bunch of living shadows. Uh, you could also like, uh, this is good if you have a bunch of one ones and stuff like that. And then you're getting really great value by basically transforming them all into three twos. So mm, maybe good. Profiteer, 4 mana 5 3. When I'm summoned, create a lucky find. Okay, so more lucky find stuff, which is pretty good. It's a 4 mana 5 3. Uh, 5 attack is obviously very relevant with reputation. So, uh, dies to a lot of 3 damage removal, dies to a lot of aggressively set at 2 drops and 3 drops. So, it's okay. Lucky finds are very good. So, you can get some extra buffs, get some extra keywords. Uh, you can throw it on her as well. So, there's uh, some value there. Dancing Droplet, 1 mana, 1-1, one, one. when I'm recalled, draw 1, and it is Attune <clears throat> and Elusive. Okay, so Attune means 1 mana, 1-1. One, one. So you can play Droplet on 1 and play Recall, or like Retreat, on um, turn 2, right? Retreat, Return, So you'll because you'll be on 3 that turn, so you can actually cheat out 3 drops on turn 2. So imagine you do Dancing Droplet on Defense 1, then on Attack 2, and, and also, it has to not be interrupted, so you uh, retreat this, so hopefully it doesn't get vile feasted. Then you return like Zed or something, right? That sounds really good actually, being able to cheat a turn 3 unit on attack 2. So yeah, definitely relevant. That can come up uh, against a lot of regions, basically the ones that don't have vile feast. Um, 3 mana 4, 3 Merciless Hunter. So this is the card I've been hearing so much about. This is the Sharima 3 drop that's going to turn on, overwhelm, and just absolutely decimate the meta. 3 mana 4, 3 Fearsome. Grant an enemy vulnerable. So this is giving me Ruin Runner vibes, how Ruin Runner is just a absolutely broken, overstated 5 cost. This is an absolutely broken, overstated 3 cost. This is the strongest 3 cost in the game, by far. And yeah, in a game where like, three drop units and four drop units really aren't all that insane this card is bonkers this card is just absolutely bonkers so yeah it's just yeah that's all there is to that <clears throat> more guardians of the ancient theme stuff we got two mana two one ribbon dancer play blade dance one 
Okay, so Blade Dance is a separate keyword. I saw it over here. I'm going to have to actually talk about this first before I can understand the other cards. So the new keyword Blade Dance is start a free attack with that many summon blades. Wait, what if you do like, you play this, that starts a free attack with your blades, and if you also play this, like let's say you're on turn 6, you do 4, four drop, the blades are going to attack, and then you can play your 2 drop and the blades are going to attack as well. Because if so, that's kind of insane. That's a lot of free attacks, especially for units that need to see attacks being uh, casted, like MF and Quinn. So, Blade Dance 2, 3, 3, Blade Dance 1. Okay. I see. Um, and the blades were 1 mana 1 ones, right? So, they're just being sent towards the enemy and they can be blocked however they want. So there's just blades everywhere. I see. Okay, so 4 mana 3-3, three, three, basically a 4 mana 5-5 five, five, split on 3 bodies, but the 2-2 two, two stats are being summoned and attacked right away. Same with this, this is a technically a 2 mana 3-2, three, two, but 1-1 one, one worth of stats is being sent at the opponent, right? In terms of value, so that's really interesting. Uh, 4 mana 3-3 three, three is kinda weak, 2 mana 2-1 two, is kinda weak, so yeah, I understand how they're balancing the stats of the blades compared to the base units. Interesting. So, there they are. Now I understand. Um, syncopation? Syncopation? There's so many ways to probably pronounce this, but I have no idea. I've never seen this word in my life. Um, first, swap two allies. So it's the Shen uh, spell, but it doesn't give them both barrier, it's just a swap. This is a really interesting combat trick that we haven't seen before. I don't know why my immediate thought is to swap something with Swole, Swole Squirrel just to have it hit, which would be really, really funny. Uh, and then you can buff that up, but this is good for like saving something. Like This is really anti-challenger, is the way I see this. So if you get something challenged, you use Cinco, and then you take away the unit that is being challenged that you want to protect and send in something else, right? So that's really cool. Um, you can also use this to cheat attacks. So I was thinking about defense, but... Uh, on attack as well, if something is hitting face, like let's say you're 1-1, one, one, and let's say a 10-10 is being blocked, your opponent determines the block targets, then it passes initiative to you, then you can swap your 1-1 one, one and your 10-10, and your 10-10 will hit face. Crazy, right? So, for 2 mana, that's there's a lot of flexibility in this card. There's a lot of things you can do with it, so always have to be mindful. Coastal Defender, 4 mana 2-6. When you summon an ally, give me 2-0 this round. So this is obviously really good if you swarm the board the, uh, while you have him already developed and then he swings really big. Maybe you Cinco to uh, swap him in for, uh, for like a blade. So fairly good there. Blade Dance we saw. 8 mana 3-5 Elusive. When you Blade Dance, I attack with the blades. Whoa, <laughs> that's cool. And it Blade Dances itself. And it's a free attack, so if you have this developed, and it's very costly of course, every time you blade dance this thing is also hitting with the blades and it's elusive 3, that's really funny. Um, if you can cheat this out somehow, get it cheaper maybe with like uh, the, the scouts, I, I forgot what they're, they're called, but every time they strike they cheapen the most expensive card in your hand. Cheating this out sounds really really good. Alright, so let's get into... Uh, the main character herself, Aurelia, summoning all the blades probably. I have no idea what she does, I'm so excited, so let's get into this I video. Not to forget, but to remember. She fights with every Deadly blade, Grace, every... and she's a 3 mana 3 2. Ooh, ooh. They learned their lesson with Ophelia, so they're like, let's not make her a 3 3, let's just, you know, pump her out as a 3 2. They learned their lesson, so. Quick attack, when I'm summoned or round start, if you have the attack token, create a flawless duet in hand. Okay, we're going to see what flawless duet is. Level up, 12 plus allies have attacked, so each of the blades counts towards this. I can see the immediate synergy. This is really cool. I like this, aggressive Ionia strategy. Wow, this is so sick. Beat in its place. Here's the flawless duet. It's the blade dance effect, it's just blade dance 2, and this is a fleeting slow spell. Blade dance 2 immediately. Wow, that's really strong. That's like one mana deal 2, essentially. Hmm. Step, strike, left foot strike, right oh, foot that's strike, so turn. good with Gringly Duo. Mind your form. Oh no. Aurelia Elusives? My hand will With Kinku Wayfinder, Mono Ionia could be a thing. Yeah, Blade Dance. This is cracked, bro. Oh, 
7 mana slow spell, big spell. Blade Dance 3, pick an ally to attack with the blades. Oh. There is some cheese to be had here. Yeah, attack with the, uh, yep. What I tell you, that is some cheese right there. We dance to the drums of war, and all our hearts beat as one. That was pretty. Uh, three mana, four three, so way better stats. When I'm summoned or round start, if you have the attack token, create a flawless duet. When allies attack, create a blade surge. Okay, so same effect, but now when allies attack, create blade surge. Cool. That's crazy. Show them no weakness. Why isn't she attacking on this board, bro? Oh, because that was still the blade attack. Yeah, <laughs> Sejuani coming down. This person's playing Sej Swain, bro. Swap a rally with an ally? Okay. For free. And it's burst. How long can they resist while their cities... So no matter how they block. Yep. Quell our yep. Wow. Our home, our ancestors are safe. Okay, so that's the interaction I was talking about with Cinco, but this can be done for Once free more. with that uh, spell. May 5th, that is tomorrow as of recording. Wow. Okay. Aurelia is definitely the coolest champion that is being released. And, you know, I'm comparing that to Malphite and Zillion, which isn't too much competition. But, wow, that is really cool. That is, like, obscenely cool. Here's Aurelia, here's the duet, here's the level, here's the blade surge, here's the vanguards. As we saw all that, new card. Lead and follow. Two mana, recall an ally to create a flawless duet. Okay. Recall an ally, so recall synergy. And free for flawless duet. But flawless duet is probably going to be fleeting, right? Yep. It's fleeting um, no matter how you generate it. Even if the cards don't say create a fleeting flawless duet, it's going to be fleeting, it looks like. So, interesting. 12 plus allies attack. That's very easy to do. So let's think about some immediate synergy. Immediate synergy would be scout stuff. So you could either do this with uh, Quinn and go Demacia. That doesn't sound that great. You can go Bilgewater and do Aurelia MF, which sounds good, but they're contesting each other on turn three. If Aurelia was a turn four champion, it'd be better, but um, still very, very good. Um, with Emperor Dies, this is very good. So Aurelia Azir, she could do, she could benefit from having Azir Sand Soldier's attack. Other than that, it looks like Mono Ionia with uh, Elusive stuff also looks very good. So basically a version of Kinku Elusives that runs the Kinku Wayfinder Allegiance card. Very solid. So there's a couple different directions we can take Aurelia. I'm pretty excited to see what her competitive viability is and what her best deck is actually going to be going forward. So I'm going to be testing Aurelia the most out of any of the champions for sure. She seems like she's very flexible and can be very powerful. So let's look at the uh, reveal website, see if there's anything we miss. I don't believe there is. Pog. Okay, cool. Next, we're going to go into the patch 2.7.0 patch notes. I very briefly skimmed and only saw like two cards being changed. I didn't see what they were. So it should be pretty quick to get through. So we're getting the um, new expansion, of course. This expansion includes new keyword. Yay, I love new keywords. 42 cards. Right. Mini expansion. Very fun. All right, we saw the blade dance. New challenges. Uh, cool. Card updates. Here we go. So atrocity getting nerfed. NASA's Thresh decks have been thriving and consistently surpassing our win rate and play rate thresholds for what we consider healthy. We're making small changes to the Shadow Isles portions of the deck that have continued to cause meta problems. For now, while Nasus is a clear powerhouse for the deck, we want to leave the power of Sharima intact. Okay, good way to go about it. We are watchlisting Nasus so we can continue to monitor his performance while investigating potential changes to him in the future if he continues to overperform. Atrocity going from 6 to 7. We want to reduce the efficiency and effectiveness in which Atrocity can end game, so this obviously also hurts deep, and this will hurt any Ladros deck uh, in the future. Introducing more risk and counterplay by overall reducing the amount of windows where it can be safely played to end the game. So, we can no longer Nautilus Atrocity same turn with max mana, although that almost never came up unless you were on Nautilus 2, like the second one and something happened to the first, but I think that's fine. This doesn't hurt deep insane. Uh, some plays will be altered, but that's about it. 
Blighted Caretaker, incredibly powerful due to its synergy with Slay and Fearsome. We want to keep these synergies, but slightly reduce its early game pressure and its ability to create even more slays by moving it to one power. So he's a one mana one one. So a lot of times he's just going to not attack. He's going to be the happy tree man that summons the two saplings and then watches them attack. Okay. That's a good change. I think him being able to trade into things early game also was kind of annoying. Especially since you get so much manipulation in how the attack plays out due to the saplings themselves. And that is it for the card changes. Okay, Shurima got a little more vast. I, I love this. This is like one of my favorite terminologies, man. The Shurima Desert's so vast. Uh, boards. So we got some time clock ticking, steampunk looking, zillion echo loving board. I like it. Time Temple, it's called. Uh, reminds me of like Dwarven Ruins in uh, Skyrim, so... Big shout out there. Chip as a pet. This is pretty much what everyone wanted. I think this is going to be the most purchased uh, pet in the entire game. Personality, grounded. Best friend, Malphite. Most popular companion for legends with allergies. Looks like he's going Super Saiyan a little bit here, so you'd love to see that. He's going from uh, like Super Saiyan Blue to like Red, I guess, which is backwards. I don't know what's going on there, but kind of cool. Uh, Chrono Chip. Wow, so Mecha, Mecha Chip. If he wags too hard, he gets sent us back to the Great Dark and War. Okay, so he's a time manipulator. Punctual, enjoys countdowns. Uh, cool. So this also reminds me of Dwarven stuff, of course, in Skyrim. Uh, Zillion Carback looking kind of nice. Okay, dude. I Boy. Zillion with the boy hand. I like that. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> Try to keep up. Which meme is this? I think she's just hitting stuff. That's pretty cool. I like that, too. Uh, icon, cool, 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 I love this. Oh, so the game is trying to push Aurelia's ear. That's going to be a structure deck, nice. Expeditions, Guardians of the Ancient stuff, cool. Mushrooms now do aggregated damage at all at once when drawn together rather than taking one X amount of times. So this beats Lissandra having tough on the uh, Nexus. So that means Ezreal, Teemo, Foundry, Shroom, and Doom can come back. So if the opponent draws five Shrooms while the Nexus is tough, they only take four. I like that. That's a really great change. Let's go. That's that's actually insane. Teemo is relevant. Cards created by timelines now inherent prismatics. Cool. Effects for Rally and Round Star have been improved. Cool. Uh, cross Shard will no longer be supported as of June 2nd. Terrible. This is really tragic, especially as a streamer that does a lot of viewer 1v1s it's going to suck for me and for my community to not be able to play together uh, especially when we want to do like scrims and stuff prior to tournament which has a lot of value this is directly um, affecting me so it kind of sucks uh, sucks for a lot of people as well just trying to play with friends cross shard bug fixes bug fixes first one of the day would show sun disc as part of the rewards it's kind of funny uh, uh, okay, cool, and that's everything. So, yep, yeah, very excited for Relia. That's going to be who I'm playing. Uh, definitely on release. Hype. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out since I'm still trying to grow. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one. Laters.